Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. Report number 58534 Class Alpha. Submitted by witness on Thursday, November 16, 2017. Year 2017. State Pennsylvania. Observed. I went into my woods. I was sitting at my deer spot and after sitting for about an hour, a few deer ran through the woods. They acted as if something was pushing them. A few seconds later, a Sasquatch, seven and a half to eight feet tall, reddish brown hair, came following them. Also noticed, a wood knock. Other witnesses, me. Other stories, yes. Time and conditions, sunset, cold, windy. Environment, woods, cornfields, mountains, lots of wetlands and ponds. Also lakes and streams. Large plots of undisturbed forest. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Nate Moyer. After meeting with the witness and being in the area for approximately six hours, I believe he saw a Sasquatch. He is a sincere person that did nothing to lead me to think of a hoax. He told me additional stories from the surrounding area. Most of the family has had some sort of unexplained activity, howls, knocks, and whoops. They even had 45 chickens that through the years were all taken or killed. He told me some were taken by an owl, but most were not. They had ducks that were killed and left in the enclosure. The heads were pulled off the ducks and left in a pile. After driving the area and hiking where he had his sighting, I believe the area has everything needed to support a family or group of large animals. Black bears are prevalent in the area and in no way can be what is being seen. All of the statements made are of a flat-faced animal with no snout like a bear. He did say that he did first think it was a bear only because he could not understand what else it could be. In this sighting, the witness was deer hunting on the property. The deer was pushed out of a dense thicket of briars where they are usually safe from humans. The doe he shot was not concerned with him being there. It was more worried about something behind it. After the deer was shot, a figure emerged from the thicket. It was seven to eight feet tall, walking on two legs, approached the dead deer and looked directly at Sean. He was frozen in place and could only watch as it disappeared back up the hill. This property is surrounded by state game lands that lead to a vast area of forest. This is an ongoing investigation area and because of that and the witnesses, grandparents, we will not disclose the location. Report number 59159, Class Bravo, submitted by witness on Tuesday, March 6, 2018. Year 2018, State, Pennsylvania. Location details wooded area around job site. Some fields and cleared construction site. Nearest town, Siegel. Nearest road, Old Route 36. Observed. I was at our job site tending a portable generator and turbo heater. I was sitting in my truck almost asleep when I heard leaves crunching over in the woods. At first I started thinking deer, but as it gets closer I could tell it was on two feet. I hear it going back and forth several times, almost like pacing. Then I can see in the moonlight movement with the footsteps crunching the leaves it was definitely on two feet. Then it stops all of a sudden a loud bang off the tank. I think it had to have thrown a rock as loud as the bang on the tr tank was. Then more footsteps, leaves crunching even closer now. As I'm trying to look into the woods, where I last saw movement, I realized it was standing right at the edge of the woods, right beside my truck. I was paralyzed. It had to have seen me at this point sitting there. As I tried to get my composure, I reached down in the door for my handgun. As I looked back up, I could hear it walking off in the leaves. I started the truck and turned the headlights towards the woods but didn't see or hear anything more. 
This was the most terrifying five to six minutes of my life. Other witnesses, I was alone. Other stories, no. Time and conditions, 2.02 a.m. Well lit moon moonlight, three quarter moon. Mostly clear sky, 23 degrees Fahrenheit, cold environment, wooded property, clearing around job site, 84 feet water tanks. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Amy Bew. I interviewed this witness over the phone and then met him in person. I found him to be extremely credible. He is a construction foreman in Pennsylvania. When this encounter took place, he was at a construction site where he had to sit in his truck all night while waiting to make sure that a generator didn't stop working. The generator was heating up some water that had frozen. He had to make sure that the fire stayed lit. He had set his alarm to go off every half hour, and in the meantime, he was bundled up and would sleep in the driver's seat of his truck with the seat back. The truck was shut off because he wasn't able to dim the light with it on. It was cold, but there was no snow on the ground. He stated that before his alarm went off at the next set time, he was awoken by what he thought was something pushing on and moving the truck. He realized that he couldn't see the flame of the generator as if something was blocking it, but when he looked again, it was clear. He didn't immediately notice anything else, and although he was startled, he started to go back to sleep. Soon, he could hear something walking into some nearby trees. He could hear the thing pacing back and forth. Then he heard something hit the generator with a large boom. He assumed it was a rock. A figure stepped out of the woods. It was in profile and there was no muzzle. It looked to be uniform in color and it was tall. He claimed that he knew right away that it was way too tall to be a person. He tried to get his bearings and went to grab his phone from the seat next to him, and he accidentally hit it across the seat and onto the floor. When he straightened back up from trying to grab it and his gun, he said the figure turned to face him. When he got to this part of telling me the story, he was visibly shaken. His wife and dog were with him while he was telling it to me, and they were upset that he was upset. He said it was then that he realized how massive this thing was. The shoulder width was beyond anything that he could comprehend and he knew that it was looking at him. At this point in the interview process, I asked an investigator who I had brought along with me to go and stand where he had pointed out that the figure had been standing. This investigator is about six feet tall and when she stood there, the witness was again visibly upset he said the size of the creature compared to this investigator was so much bigger that he couldn't comprehend it. Using a measuring tape against a branch, he remembered its head hitting. We estimated it to be between 8 and 9 feet tall. It was, however, the width and bulk of it that had really impressed him. The witness reported that the figure soon moved back into the woods and that he stuck it out as long as he could through the rest of the night. This happened around 2 a.m., but was on high alert and didn't sleep anymore. As he was collecting himself after giving me his report, I asked his wife if he had said anything to her after this had happened. She said he had texted her and called her right after the figure left, and that he was extremely upset both then and when he got home. He didn't go to work for the next few days, and this guy never misses work. He is just a normal, hard-working guy who had an experience he wasn't looking for and that he still can't explain.